Welcome to Allergy Season, a Let's Play series where Joey and I play through some difficult games. On this episode, I get to a boss. I, I finally get to a boss. It took so long. It took a long time, but we did it. We, we beat it, and it was actually the easiest boss of the game. So, yeah, I don't have that much to brag about. Caucasians. And frankly, we saved the world from racism earlier. Don't you remember the help? There's like a whole subgenre of movies called White People Solve Racism. <laughs> but so like, yeah, the idea of a comic book movie winning Best Picture isn't even remotely surprising to me. I'm like, yeah, probably one day it will. I'll like all you have to do is look at like the tomato scores for what they are. Like it's a meaningless number, but as in terms of like percentage of people who liked the movie, film critics have Stockholm syndrome because if they say they don't like a comic book movie, they get fucking doxxed. So you look at like Avengers three or whatever has like a 92 and i'm like this movie is fine it is which one was avengers 3 and uh, yeah so it's like that is a movie that it's not even a movie it's just like you know I, I, yeah it's an impressive feat of engineering um with a bunch of characters who all sound the same and some impressive animation and frankly a movie that is somewhat in my opinion morally and ethically questionable given how much money it costs I think that in this era, it is, cons it could be argued that it is ethically not kosher for a movie to cost that much money to produce. I agree. Like for, the, for those two Avengers movies, it cost them something like seven hundred million dollars to produce them, to do the three of them or something like that. Like that's un that's irresponsible. That's borderline like reprehensible. Yeah. So, so yeah, we're, we're, basically when Martin Scorsese said those are not cinema, and people were like, "No, fuck you!" I was gonna say, was like, what are during you our break, about? what we were talking about was Marty, Marty Scorsese saying that the MCU are not yeah. cinema. But also, like a bunch of nerds on Twitter, what are they fucking surprised that the guy who spends most of his spare time trying to like preserve classic and foreign and independent cinema from like, isn't a fan of fucking Spider Man? Like, no shit, he's not. He's a goddamn grown up. Well, I'm pl look, you're absolutely right. He's a guy who spends his life. Uh, he found, Art. yeah, he founded the organization that takes old films, yeah, that preserves that, old cinema, yeah, yeah, and turns them digital because they're decaying. Yeah. In a fucking his world. like life's work is to like save cinema history, and like in my in the last ten years, we've seen like the era of the the Studio B picture or the middle. Like basically, you only have two types of movies now. Movies that cost like a nickel because they're like micro budget zeros or five hundred million dollars. Because it used to be a studio would make like sixty movies and cost two to ten dollars and a million dollars a piece. Now they make two movies and they each cost six hundred million dollars. Yeah. So it's like an uh, entire middle ground has been completely annihilated. Thank you for the welcome back. Um and we're back. Yeah. And like I have enjoyed... Show everyone your tattoos so that they know what you're talking about. Yeah, that one. Oh, this one is my Mystery Science Theater 3000 yeah. tattoo. I actually really like that too. And this is my uh, poster for Elliot Gould in The Long Goodbye, directed by Robert Alton tattoo. What's his name died from Jackie Brown? Too. I know, Robert Forster. I'm gutted. I was on... As I was telling you earlier, I follow a lot of those movie collecting things. And there's a live... A YouTuber that I follow who does the movie club. And it's just he does live streams every day, and we hang out and talk about movies and make each other spend money on Blu-rays. Uh, it's bad, but um, <clears throat> uh, during that uh, that stream, the news came in that Robert Forster had died, and I was gutted. I think I got to rewatch Jackie Brown. It's a great film if you haven't seen it. I haven't seen one. Your stream stream keeps freezing and stuttering. And I keep having to refresh my web page. Hmm. Everything seems fine by us. Yeah, on the video, I'm watching the uh, the preview. Hmm. When I lean down like this, you can kind of see my thinning spot up top. <laughs> That's a bummer. You want to deactivate some stuff? That might deactivate while we're talking cinema. Welcome to On Cinema at the Cinema. That's not this. No. Have you ever seen On Cinema at the you Cinema? Can't, you can't hijack my channel. <laughs> Have you ever seen On Cinema at the Cinema? No. It's um, uh, Tim from Tim and Eric's like movie review channel. It's so funny. 
Oh, that sounds good. Like yeah, him and Greg Turkington. Very funny. But yeah, like I have enjoyed my time with a lot of those Marvel movies. Some of them I think are dog shit, but there are some that I'm like, yeah, no, that was a good time. I had, I had fun watching it, but, you know, I'm not going to be surprised or offended if someone points out that they're amusement park rides. But that's what they're designed to be. It's and frustrating. as you said, it's okay to like them. Of course it is. It's frustrating to me that I see, like, there's no art to them. They're not, like, making much effort on them. Like, they're very mm. clearly made by committee and focus group. But, like, because it's not like that kind of film can't be... No. Real. Like, I mean, Mad Max 4, Jaws, Jurassic Park, those are brilliant films as well as being fun in the newest amusement park rides. You know? Well, no, and that's the it's thing, right? Yeah, like, you can do good quality, like, cheesy movies. For like sure, movies. like, it's just, you know, I would just like to see those big tentpole movies made, you know, with a bit more effort towards, like, the artistic storytelling parts. Like, there's a YouTube channel that I highly recommend. He doesn't make videos anymore, but it was called Every Frame of Painting. This guy named Tony, who's a film editor. Tony Wonder? And Tony Zhu, I think. Not Tony Wonder. But uh, he would do these uh, film essays about you know, movie storytelling and things that work in movies and things that don't. And quite often he would use Marvel movies as a negative example. Be and not because boo on Marvel movies, because they're like an easy thing to use as an example because everyone's seen them, you know? And so if you watch... They like, are, yeah, they are, like, if you're going to compare them, yeah. you're like, oh, what would you know? Like, it seems like I'm shooting on Marvel movies a lot, but it's like, no, it's just, that's the easy one because everyone has seen them. And they're, an, and they're a good example of what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, like... If you want, he has a video about um, the way that Akira Kurosawa used movement in his film. Uh, in a variety of ways and in a variety of uh, approaches in different films. And, and then he uses the counterexample uh, scenes from Avengers and shows like really how completely motionless and staid the Avengers is and how lifeless. And it's like you had all this money and all this all these resources and this is what you did with it. Look at what Akira Kurosawa did 70 fucking years ago and you're just like you know, he tells you, the story with the camera with the... You liked uh, you liked Iron Man the first one. Yep, I thought it was yeah. fine. I think it's I think it's a fun one. I think it was definitely one of the better ones. I like most of Thor 3. I think the last act of Thor 3 is pretty idiotic, but um, the first two bits I quite like. I like Guardians of the Galaxy well enough, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 well enough. Uh, Thor, I, Iron Man 3 even I thought was, was pretty good. I didn't mind Iron Man 3. Everyone, yeah. everyone shit on it. And well, because like, Iron Man 3 felt more like a Shane Black movie than an Iron Man movie, which is probably why I liked it. Shane Black, who wrote things like Lethal uh, Weapon 1 and 2, yeah. he wrote Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, he made the other guy, or the good guys. Not the other guys. The other guys is that uh, everyone just hated uh, their depiction of Mandarin, which I get because that yeah, was not, not the fucking Mandarin. Yeah, but no, and I, I wasn't heartbroken over it. No, I, I mean I was kind of hoping that it would be Ben Kingsley, so that'd be cool. But it didn't really matter to me. It was fine. Yeah. Um, I only saw it the one time. Though most of those things, I only end up seeing once, and then I'm happy. In preparation of Endgame, we ended up watching. The entire Ooh. I'm trying to think like if there's one that I would rewatch. Like there are some. Uh, I wouldn't. I actually. I really, really dislike the first two Avengers of the Three. I think Joss Whedon is a is a worse director than he is a writer, which is surprising because I think he's a terrible writer too. Um, but uh, Avengers Three was was you know, it was uh, entertaining. I enjoyed my time with it. Um, I didn't like that they neutered my favorite character from Ragnarok off screen before before, three, before Avengers three started. But whatever. Oh, Tessa Thompson. Yeah, I really liked Valkyrie in that movie. Now I didn't see Avengers four, but I understand a lot of those characters are probably back to life again. So that's nice. Spoiler, sorry guys. Yeah, there's a couple that aren't. Actually, the day after that movie came out, um, I was at the Calgary Expo. And uh, Mallory, I had her go through and break down every single... Like, just tell me what happened, because there's no fucking way I'm sitting for three hours to watch a Captain America movie in a theater. I'll watch it at home one day. Or I probably will, now I probably won't watch it until my son's old enough to be able to, to be allowed to watch it. Because mm. he's excited about them. And that makes me happy. It bums me out that my son can't watch all these superhero movies. <laughs> like, to me, that it feels kind of like beside the point of a superhero, but Why can't whatever. I fucking do this? You can do it, man. You just ate too much pizza. 
No, I used to be able to do the visceral attack. I think it was going too soon. Well, like that one. I used to be able to. He doesn't really give you any like. Well, when he ran, I used to be able to shoot them as he ran, and he would go down. But he doesn't see. He doesn't give you a lot of frames of like warning that he's about to do that shoulder charge. eh? No. Well, when he's done the shoulder charge, and I've shot him when he's doing it, and it doesn't do anything, and I'm just like, the fuck. He's the. I can get to him every fucking time. But now the issue is I just can't get past him. How would you? Okay, here's what we'll do. I I can talk about movies all day. This This is good content for us. Good well, conversation. Yeah. Right. So I've been talking about what I don't like. Let's talk about. Let's go to my lists. I have a lot of lists. I about. How far back do you want to go? What year should we start with for my top ten of the year? I think that's a viewer question. Viewers, <clears throat> viewer. <laughs> it's all about the right time. Oh yeah. I'm out you. Bam! 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 That was fun. Um, I think I have everything back to like 2004. Let's start 2018. That's easy. All right. Yeah, let's do last year. We'll start now. Last year, I'm going to start off with a little bit of a qualifier here. I only saw 16 new movies last year. It's the lowest total I've ever had um, for whatever reason. So we're going to do the top 10. Keeping in mind that I didn't see that many movies, and some of these probably, in any, if I had seen movies, would not have been on my list in any other year. Number 10. Ready for this? Are you ready for this? Ready. Number 10. They'll Love Me When I'm Dead, which was a documentary about the last movie Orson Welles tried to make, which was eventually completed and released on Netflix last year. Oh, okay. So that was pretty good. Number 9. Free Solo. Which was a documentary about uh, this guy who did free solo climb up the um, Yosemite's Elton Jam. You know what that is? You know, it's the face and Yosemite National Park. And Free Solo was climbing I, with no ropes. I always mispronounce Yosemite when I read it. Yosemite? I always yeah. go Yosemite. Yeah. And I'm always, I always like, what the <laughs> fuck is Yosemite? And then I'm always like, oh, it, it takes me a minute. And then I go, Yosemite. Oh, nine, okay, we'll do 1999 next. That's a good year for movies. Uh, number se- number eight, Paddington 2. Have you seen Paddington 2? No. You show Paddington 2 to your daughter. That movie is fucking magic, and so is the first one. But it's absolutely fantastic. Y- yes, trust me. Right. So good. Number seven, Black Klansman. A mm. Spike Lee joint. Yeah, I haven't seen that movie. It's very good. Isn't I'm that a Spike the one? Lee fan. Yeah, it's... that's the one that, because it didn't win the Oscar, Samuel Jackson like, walked out of it. Or tried, right? to, tried to walk out of the Oscar. Uh, well, I, I know this might have won an Oscar for that movie for writing, I think. Yeah, anyway, he won it for really good. Else. He finally won an Oscar. Spike Lee is one of those artists who, like, the fact that he had never won an Oscar was kind of like, boy, that doesn't speak well of the Oscars. He's kind of like how Scorsese is when he's The Departed. And I like The Departed, but, like, of all the movies he could have won for, he made a lot of better movies than The Departed before The Departed. The Departed is fantastic, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, then number six was Mandy. Did you see Mandy? Nicolas Cage in Mandy. Oh, I didn't. I don't think you would like it, but I love it. It is... Basically, it's like if David Lynch directed a fucking metal video. I was going to say, it got good... Like, yeah. Everyone who I know who's seen it it's was great. like... It's fucking amazing. It's metal as fuck, but it's also yeah. Lynch as fuck. And I know you're not a big Lynch guy. Based on the clips I showed you at Edmonton that one time. <laughs> okay, and here you go. Snobby Joey, number five, Into the Spider-Verse. Phenomenal movie. Yeah. Loved it. Brilliant. Number four, Annihilation. The Natalie Portman. Yeah. Uh, I didn't like it, I think, as much as I liked Alex Carlin's previous film, Ex Machina, but I did like Annihilation quite a bit. And the book is based on both really good. Number three, Isle of Dogs. Isle of Dogs was incredible. Yeah, my favorite, like, active filmmaker, Wes Anderson, directed my favorite movie of all time, The Grand Budapest Hotel. That's your favorite, eh? I have a three-way tie. My three favorite movies of all time are Spirited Away, The Long Goodbye, and Grand Budapest Hotel. Those are three very different movies. They are. I'm a usually if it's like, hey, usually favorite movies are like similar. Yeah, I, I'm like a, I'm like an over. <laughs> Number two, The Ballad of Buster Scrubs. Buster Scruggs. That movie was really good. I always called The Ballad of Buster Scrubs. Because there was a podcast where they called it that, but yeah, it's really good, right? 
My son got so annoyed because we listened. I made him listen to the like cowboy trades and the ring song like every morning on the way to school for like a month. And my number one, blue bullet, the death of Stalin. Oh yeah, really good. The same the guy who made it uh, created the TV show Veep. Yeah, and also the British show The Thick of It. Anyway, I'm a big fan. So that was 2018. So we're going to 1999 now. Well, you keep uh, killing these fuckers over and over again because I can't. But you know what? That's the point of this game, man. You just keep doing it. You get better as you go. I'm sure I've done 1999. I have lots of pages. Oh, yeah, here we go. 1999, best of. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Number 10, Bowfinger. The Eddie Murphy, Steve Martin joint, directed by Frank Oz. That is a funny movie. Number 9, South Park. Bigger, longer, and uncut. Holds up. Number eight, The Matrix. Arthouse Joey, he likes himself a little fun uh, now and then. It's a good picture. Yeah, it is. Number seven, All About My Mother. Which, if you've never seen a Pedro Almodovar film, I would recommend that as a good one to start with. Number six, Takashi Miike's Audition. Have you ever seen Audition? You want to talk about, like, having trouble sleeping. Watch Audition. Why? Because it's fucked. And it'll make you have a hard time sleeping. Okay. It's really good. And that's a good thing? Well, I don't know. Do you like scary movies? <laughs> no. Oh, well then don't watch Audition. But it's great. <laughs> Number five. You'd like this movie. The Limey. Oh, okay. Steven Soderbergh. It's uh, Terrence Stamp. He's like a British gangster. You'd like it. It's stylish. <clears throat> Very good. Number four is actually a documentary Martin Scorsese made about Italian movies called My Village Movie. Oh, okay. Which I think he made it for TV. But it's like a five-hour documentary about... Italian cinema, which is I like movies about movies, and I like getting a pad of paper and a pen and just writing down movies as people know. <laughs> you're doing better each time, though. Like you, you, you are. You're. Improving. I'm doing the exact same on him as I always do. Right. So you gotta like finesse it. I know. Part of me thinks I need to get to him, go back to the lamp, go to the hunter's dream, and find out how much it costs to fucking level up. Hmm. That's not a bad idea. I should just do that now. <coughs> Why not? Get you, don't all have any, you don't have any echoes, but... Hollow Knight was my number three of the year, the year the game came out. It sucks that it's my no, problem. No, my number two, sorry. No, no. Uh, oh, I thought you were going like, what? It doesn't suck. Um, a problem I have in games, it's kind of like the problem I was having here in the beginning, is I hate games that don't tell me what to do. Yeah. And it's such a weird thing. It's weird that I like Hollow Knight as much as I do because of that. Like, I'm like, ugh. I don't know what level I'm on. Where am I supposed to go? I don't want to spend... It. And for me, it's a time management issue. Like, I don't know about you, but I don't have as much time to play games as I would like. And if I do, it's not likely going to be three hours in a row. It's going to be like, oh, I might have 30 minutes here. I want to jump in and play this. Which is why I play a lot of Tetris on the Switch. Yeah. Inception is one of the top three. Yeah. I can see that. I loved Inception when I first saw it. Again. And I still like it a lot. Uh, mm. Practical effects. Yep. That lot, hallway was incredible. There's a lot of stuff. If you like Inception, I highly recommend the film Paprika by Satoshi Kon. Uh, there's a ton of visual and thematic references to that film in Inception. Like, entire scenes that he literally just shot that are straight out of Paprika. It's really cool. They're really great. It's animated. Alright. Whoa! Shoot him. <laughs> gonna die. Shoot him. Yeah. Happy pen. Happy pen! Nice. You don't have that much HP. Well, that's the thing. Like, we're doing good damage. Yeah. But we're... I'm taking too much fucking damage. Yeah, I know you have my you fucking that, blood. I could get that dodge going. That's not helpful. <laughs> like, yeah, no shit, Joey. Nice! nice. I'm behind the wall. Wait for you to throw another one. Come on, lady. You just watched me murder your friend, and she's like, Maybe I don't want to attack you. Oh, no, she's already forgotten you. 
big old powerful attack. You should be able to sneak up behind him and do like a glory kill or something. Well, like in Dark Souls, you could backstab. You that? Okay, yeah. You went up and it was like an animation and it was a huge backstab and you did like Yeah, that's extra cool. Damage. You should be able to do that in this game. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I have 17,000 souls now. My you thought was, fuck up. I'm going to go yeah. back and I'm going to level up at least twice. Yeah. I'll have to fight everything again. But, but you'll be stronger. Plus, I'll do that and buy some fucking uh, vials. Because right. that's yeah, also yeah, yeah. my problem. I, I, like I said, man, this is totally the best environment so far. Well. She's doing Wii U, Wii U too. Yeah, man. We're a happy family. I'm going to get my uh, <clears throat> energy drink on. See? No, this is how bad I'm doing. What? You need an energy drink. No, it's because I'm sleepy. Uh, just put it in the sink. I rinsed them out. Okay. It's because I'm sleepy, yo. I need a drink, too, actually. Which is why... Well, when she's awake. Do you uh, mean when you do have her? Yeah, when I do have her, I don't... Like, yeah, I drink... You make daddy drink. <laughs> you... If you die of fire, it is your problem. Because you made me drink. You made me drink. Um, because you're lying to people. <laughs> I... I don't have a drinking problem. Drinking no problem, problem with no me. more rum. That's a fucking problem. <laughs> I keep my temple clean. Fuck. I have not. The last time I had any alcohol or anything, for that matter, was Halloween 2010. What Coming happened on, on Halloween 2010? Uh, I drank and smoked and really didn't like it. Why did she go fucking ape shit like that? I just don't like. Uh, the taste of any alcohol I find it vile and I the one thing about myself that I'm a big fan of is my ability to form a sentence <laughs> so like if I, I know your smoke is like hey that's the one thing I'm good at I'm I know a anymore. lot of people who yeah they're like I don't drink because I like to be able to articulate yeah. and I don't like what it does to my head and I totally get it. Like, yeah. I'm just like, yeah. Now, I mean, and that, again, I would also point out that it's also not particularly good when you have obsessive compulsive disorder and anxiety disorders to load up on uh, substances. It's not the best. So that's another reason why I tend not to partake. But I'm also very much a smoking with your god kind of guy. So, like, hey, man, you do you. Well, again, oh, you're, good. you're one of those people where you're just like, you like what you like. Yeah. I'm you want to drink? With... Drink. My wife enjoys a bottle of wine or three, and you know I'm just like, hey, look at look at you. I was so sad I couldn't go to Edmonton this year. I was sad you couldn't go to Edmonton this year. Yes. Nicole was also sad. She's like, who am I gonna steal Oreos and drink wine with? Did, was there an after party at? There was. It was a very good party. There were no Oreos. They had a bunch of free liquor because they had like a booze sponsor. You know what they didn't have any of? Mm. Soda or water. Oh, it was only booze. It was only booze, and I was like, who the fuck does that? Assholes. I mean, it, whatever. I could have gone to like seven, gotten something, but I was still just kind of like, well, how hard is it to buy a? Fun? It's like there's certain breweries. Like I don't go to breweries ever or bars. Really, like, hey, you did it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, a lot of my friends, you know, that's they're still they're all into craft beers. You got so many souls now. You can go back and fill up on uh, echoes and do it all over again. Yeah, you might not even need to do it more than one more time, but. Uh, so yeah, I should be able to buy But 10. there's certain brew pubs like in the city where I'll go, and I'm like, they literally don't have any non-alcoholic beverages on, on them. It's like, buy a fucking case of Coke and leave it in the fridge. How hard is this? What about Zero Issue? I've never been to Zero Issue because oh, okay. it's nowhere near me. I'm sure they do. And um, I like Zero Issue a lot. Like Annex does because they actually have a craft soda shop there. But there's a few others in town that I've been to, and it's like, uh, can I get a soda? And like, we don't have anything. I'm like, like, there's a food truck outside. I'm like, sweet. I guess I'll go out Yeah, there so I'm going to go... Buy a Coke from the fucking food truck. Okay, cool. Well, and buy a Coke from a food truck for $3 because they're going to fucking... I mean, to be fair, that's probably what they were to charge me for... That's what they charge you for a soda at the bar anyway, so it wasn't the 3 bucks. It was more just like, okay, I mean, I guess I'll give someone else... Because I'm not buying... You don't have any food either. You just serve beer, which is fine. You know, good for you. But how hard would it be to just open... Good for you, Joey. Yeah, you know. No. It's all good. Um... Yeah. So I'm yeah, not, I also like knowing my OCD and my addictive personality, which turns out I, it's called OCD. Uh, <laughs> that it would probably not be a good idea for me to. If there are certain things that, if they are habit forming, will cause destruction in your life, I try to avoid them. You know what eats me up still? Uh, I don't. Is it a question of disease? Hey oh. Um. No. Extra life last year. It eats me up. 
uh, when I was drunk and thought, you know, it'd be really funny if I burp and I blow it in Joey's face. I like. Dude, I haven't thought of that. It's no, I know. Scary. That's just me, and it's me going. Oh, I feel like such a shitty guy. Because yeah, like your reaction was At very. The time, like, I was like, man, fuck off. Oh yeah, absolutely. At the time, you were like, hey, um, don't ever fucking do that. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, man, I'm sorry. It, it was just a joke. Man. I'm not gonna. Like. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, again, I literally haven't thought of it since it happened, but, so, you know, don't lose any more sleep over it, but it's good that you learned oh, a lesson about not being a fucking gross dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's weird because, like, I did it because, like, me and my friends do it to each sure. other. We, we think it's funny. Sure. And the thought of someone not in my friend's group not liking it. It, it, only, it didn't occur to you that I wouldn't be cool with that, which is totally understandable. <laughs> no, it's not. No, dude, like, I get it. Like, you, you're, Oh, it's... It's kind of like, so there are certain things I would say to certain people who I've been friends with for 20 years that I wouldn't probably say to just a rando, because they'd be like, the fuck kind of a thing to say to me is that? <laughs> they'd be like, you know what? That's reasonable. Hey! Lexi Fatal says, hey. Lexi? What's Lexi doing? Hey, hey, you're doing well now. You should just keep fighting these low level titles. <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> Fuck you, Joey! <laughs> you're doing so well now. Molotov to the face! Happy Ben. I'm allergic to fire. How many souls does it take what's to level up? I don't know, Joey. How many souls does it take to level up? That wasn't like. The oh, point. I, 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 I thought I was like, asking you how many souls you need to I level legitimately up. thought it was like a joke. <laughs> What the fuck kind of joke would that be? I don't know. How many does it take? Uh, <laughs> Brent, it's not a fucking I, joke. I don't know. We're doing I right. now. Now that you leveled up a bunch of times, we were dying every five minutes. We don't talk about the war. <laughs> I do. Fuck your couch, lady! Oh, I go up their ass. Did you notice that? A normal visceral attack, you go in their gut. <laughs> but from behind, that's up her butt. I'll put a hand up her butt. And I make her talk. <laughs> Work you like a fucking muck. Let me through the gate! Hey, it's that guy who keeps killing you. Why would you bring that? Kill it! Dodge. Dodge! He's got a brick. He's a brick. Bam, 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 bam. House. Bum, ba, da, bum, bum. He's mighty, my dad. Just a letting it all hang out. Oh, he's a prick. I got cocky. I got cocky. That's great, kid. Don't get cocky. Okay, Han. Rick guys fat. That's a fact. Ain't mm. holding nothing back. Oh. Chicken now, chicken now, now. Rob Zombie has a pretty good cover of that song. Here we go. <laughs> Not even a fucking boss. <laughs> nope, it's just this guy who's killed you so many times. So yeah, you could probably fill up your. I am not going back because they're all gonna respawn, Joey. It's like you've never heard of grinding. You get a fucking grind out levels, bro. It's an RPG. Well, I'm just saying that's what I would always do in these games. Not these games. I can't play these games. That Rob Zombie song is awesome. Yeah. Boom. I like Rob Zombie. I feel like you and Lexi will get along. I saw Rob Zombie's newest film. Three from Hell, the sequel to The Devil's Rejects. Which I was kind of like, why is this a movie? Devil's Rejects didn't need a sequel. And then I watched it and I was like, you know what? I heard it was really bad. I enjoyed it. Not as good as The Devil's Rejects, but not bad. It's still, you know, if you like those ones, you'll probably like this one too. If you like that, I don't think you would like Devil's Rejects. Just wait till you see me do this. My favorite Rob Zombie film was um, Lords of Salem. That's a good picture. But yeah, no, Three from Hell, it's uh, it's cool. It's a bit of a bummer, because, like, Sid Haig is only in the first five minutes, ten minutes, maybe. Man, it turns out he was ill uh, and, you know, has, has since passed away. So he kind of makes sense. Um, but, Look, uh, Yarnum. Oh, cool. Is that Yarnum? I don't know. No, that's not Yarnum. That's a big old house. I don't house. know what that is. That's the house on Haunted Hill. Those are dumb. Uh, but the <gasps> character that they add is, like, Otis's half-brother, and it works pretty good. And there's some crazy shit, and there's a bunch of, like, violence and fighting in Mexico... And, uh, yeah, you know, I enjoy it. Yeah, Lords of Salem is definitely, um, 
unlike his other movies, it's it's very much like him riffing on like uh, Italian Jello and um, like really dark satanic shit from like Beast Rides, Devil Within, and Beast Rides Out, or Devil Rides Out, Beast Within, that kind of stuff. But I really liked it. But I also totally understood why a lot of people maybe it wasn't their cup of cup of tea. Land Crow! Where's your friend? Yeah, usually they come in pairs. They, also, they often write single file to hide their numbers. <laughs> I, I saw. Found... Turn around, turn around. No, that's an item. No, yeah, go get it. <laughs> you can't. You, you fuck. You're like a person playing an RPG from the chest. There's like, so many of them now! Oh, oh man, shit, there's a lot of them. I house. found the nest! It's a murder of fucking <laughs> land crows. Those land crows. <laughs> Good news! Found a pile of rocks without the bubble. I found a, a meme the other day, and it was, uh, uh, do you know anyone over the age of 30 who still plays video games? And it's Obi-Wan going, of course I know him. He's me! <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> it was funny because I was like, first of all, who the fuck is saying that? Who's going like, who plays video games that are over the age of 40? Um... The people who can afford to play them are all over 30 because they're fucking 80 bucks a pop, yo. Shortcut, baby. Nice. Oh, God, Goku, what happened? <laughs> yeah, well, things got hefty. After I dressed up as a lady. <laughs> I dressed up as a lady and I got covered in blood. That's gonna be me. Yes, Lord of Salem is definitely slow, but I really like very slow, deliberately paced movies. I would say deliberately paced and my wife makes fun of me. She's like, you're just being fucking boring. I'm like, yeah. I, I love your wife. Yeah, she's great. She does not take. Did you any just shit. me in the face? Yeah, she just kicked you in the fucking face. Um. Yeah, I'm really sad I couldn't go to Edmonton. I I did miss your wife. But it seems like Mallory and I are, we're hanging out more. That's good. So hopefully I'll be able to go to Edmonton. It also yeah. didn't work out. Oh, I found out uh, a friend of yours also stayed, and she was not one of the originals. So I also don't know where I was going Coffee. to sleep. Well, we were, I didn't know if I could have, I could have said her name. Kavi Paramanathan. Who lives at 1122 one, <laughs> Boogie Woogie Avenue? <laughs> Turning 30! I'm Lexi, I thought you already no, turned no, no, 30. No, we're talking about oh, Blitz Girl. Here. Blitz Girl. Yeah. I was like, I'm 32 years young. Turning 33 in January. Did you die? What happened? Oh, it's one of those big guys you love oh, with the bricks. Fuck. I heard him talking. I was like, I gotta get out of this. Where, where'd that item go? What item? The bricks? Oh, Bone those... marrow ash. Oh, it's right here. It's a traditional medium that strengthens quicksilver bullets. According to the workshop, this is a special bone marrow ash collected from Hemwick Chan Lane. Hey, that's where we are. Invaluable Why to hunters is... with weak bloodline who require the use of stronger firearms, Ringo. Ringo. Ringo, we got to go destroy the hunt. Is that a good accent? I don't know if I'm doing a good job. Do it again. Put your gun up his butt. You whiffed twice! <laughs> There's a tree in the way! Didn't seem to stop him. Tree it's okay, I have a shortcut. Good. A Ringo. shortcut to what? Mushrooms! <laughs> You're not the only one who knows movie references! <laughs> hey, here's a movie I saw this year. Dora the Explorer and the Lost City of Gold. And it Dave was, saw it. And it, was was good. it was good. It was pretty good. He he I was like, you know what? It was a pretty fun little movie. He said, he's like, you know what? It it was it was fun. It was directed to the adults going, we know Dora the Explorer is ridiculous. It was fun. Like, I laughed and my kids really liked it. And I was like, you know what? This is a fun family adventure movie of a um, place they don't really make anymore. He brought up spoilers. <laughs> so when everyone gets high and turns into a cartoon. Yep. That's what made me think of it just now because you said mushrooms. Yeah, he's like, he's like that scene. Amazing. It was funny, yeah. He's like, because yeah, it goes into the door of the Explorer cartoon and he's just yeah. like... There's a part at the beginning too where she's talking to the camera and she goes, can you say Deliciosa? And her parents go... Needle. She'll grow out of it. <laughs> um, he, he did also say he enjoyed the... Um, apparently there's a scene... Uh, she keeps talking to Boots. Yeah, and then Boots talks back and you know who the voice is? Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo. Yeah, so, and it's So here's one thing about the movie that I found puzzling. 
Like, no one can hear Boots except for one scene where he talks to Dora, and you're like, she's not sure if she even imagined it. But everyone can hear Swiper, and no one finds that weird. The other characters just talk to fucking Swiper like it's normal. And that was Benicio Del Toro, was Swiper. Oh no, you fell off of a cliff. Swiper, no swiping. I just lost like 10,000. So I know. Echoes. Should have gone back, like I said. Aw, oh, you're welcome, Lexi. Da, 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 da. Um, Lexi, have you ever played Bloodborne? Or know of Bloodborne? Or seen Dora the Explorer? What she Why say? did you die? I fell off a cliff. Because he rolled off of a cliff like a fucking chump. Alright. So don't die on your way back to getting those souls. Or blood echoes, whatever. They're fucking dead. Right? It's uh, like, uh, in Hollow Knight? Oh, no, not in Hollow Knight. Salt and Sanctuary. No, not Salt and Sanctuary. The mouse one. Is that a mouse one? Yeah, there's one where you play as a mouse. Anyway, and it's like, would you like to stay or, like, rest at, and it's like a campfire? And uh, the guys at, like, RKG and uh, Prepare to Try were just like, just call it a fucking bonfire. We get it. So we're just like, you're changing one word. I have very much come to the conclusion that I like watching people play these games, but I don't want to learn them or play them. Yeah. But I am curious about Code Bane because I like anime-ass bullshit. So an anime-ass fucking Soulsborne sounds like my cup of stupid. Mm. I have played Bloodborne, made it to the first boss a couple times, and that was me dying in the same place for eight hours. Yep, that's what happened to me. Kind of want to see the door movie now. Yeah, you know, like, it's worth a... It'll show up on various streaming platforms, I'm sure. And so yeah, there are worse things you can do for 90 minutes than watch the Dora the Explorer movie. And Eva Longoria plays Dora's mom. Oh, I saw that. And uh, what's his face? John, in... John Penna. Yeah, Michael Payton. Mike from uh, Ant-Man. Oh, you almost <laughs> see that, and you're gonna lose all those echoes. Ah! My brother just platinum Bloodborne. Oh, Robbie. Including, I think, all the deals. Where does Robbie live again? <laughs> My Robbie lives at uh, 123 Sesame Street. There's someone at my work in our black site right now. And he just, like, popped out of his cubicle and said something really, like, grouchy. And my boss just was like, kind of grouch? Sesame Street grouchy kind of bullshit was that? <laughs> he's like, fuck you! Go back to your fucking trash can. Yeah, he's like, dude, what kind of weird, like, Sesame Street grouchy bullshit? So, there's this podcast that I'm a fan of called The Teacher's Lounge, and it's really funny. It's like an improvised comedy thing about these four garbage men who are, uh, not, not like trash men, but like people who are garbage, uh, who are teachers at Ham <laughs> Hamilton High School. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, at this one season, they're in New York City now, and one of them's on heroin and was talking about how he fell asleep at um, Oscar De La Hoya's party, and then he fell asleep at Oscar De La Rentes's fashion show. Mm -hmm. And then there was, he also posted at Oscar De La Rentes's trash can, and I had to pull my car over because I was laughing so hard. <laughs> All souls lost echoes like tears in vain. Basically, it's the scene in Blade Runner. Everyone always talks about it. Like, obvious trivia from Blade Runner is, you know, uh, Rutger Hauer's Tears in the Rain speech was improv on the set. So now you can tell that to somebody and act as if it's, like, really exciting and no one's... Oh, my phone's ringing. Pardon me. Hello. Okay. Is this stream worthy? <laughs> hey, what's up? The king of the dogs? Yeah. <sighs> They're laughing at me. Go ahead, attack me. Fuck. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. I wanted to be vindicated, yeah, like I was not. Alright. Fuck you. 
Okay, I'm gonna this I don't know if it's room ready or not. He fell off a cliff again, dumb shit. Fuck! I hate this! Drive! This game is very hard. Brutal ground dog day scenario, yes. Okay, so today I took my children to the swimming pool. <laughs> and uh, The swimming pool? They have one of those flow riders. Are you familiar with the flow rider? I'm aware of the rapper. Yeah, he was there and he was <laughs> no. The flow rider are those things. So I like, quickly grabbed my children and ran. It's like a surfing thing, right? Where you like they have this wake that just shoots up and you get on a board and you can fucking Oh surf. yeah, oh yeah. that thing. Yeah. yeah. So they they're kinda neat. But there was a guy there who would go out with his kid, but he was on it a lot. And this guy obviously can surf. Like he was really good with his tricks. Oh, and shit. one of those fucking assholes. So it's kinda just like, oh, okay, that's cool, dude. But I don't kept... hate people that can serve. I just hate people that no. show off. He was I mean, like, I don't even care if you're showing off really. What bothered me was that he kept doing this thing and trying to splash everybody. Like, spray water over the fucking thing. And he kept soaping the lifeguard, and the lifeguard was just sitting there being like, I'm a child, this is an adult, I'm not really supposed to yell at this guy. No, that's your job. And so I just started laughing really loud every time that guard fought, and go, ha ha! And just like, be a dick. But then like, I kept calling him a knob, and my son was just like, yeah, that guy's a knob, dad. And later on, I was like, dad, why did that knob keep doing that? Anyway, um, so I was, we were there with some friends who was there, she had her like, this kid's less than a year old. So she's sitting there with him, and the fucking knob splashed her, and and the and the kid. So she phoned me to tell me about the king knob. So I'm like, that guy's a fucking asshole. One bad enough that you're trying to impress a bunch of fucking little kids at a swimming pool. You can't be in the barn, man. Oh yeah, what's he doing in the barn? You know, this calls to mind. There's an H.P. Lovecraft story called The Dead Witch Horror, where the guy has a kid in the barn, but he's invisible. He's huge. And so that's guys like that. I thought he was too big. I thought He's was... like Tank Evans from Surf's Up. I saw Surf's Up once, I think, when it came out. I assume there was Is a... that the penguin one? Yeah, I'm <laughs> assuming that there was like an asshole penguin who splashed people. But yeah, he was. Okay. He was like that guy. But that guy would be vindicated if he was like, hey, I can also take like other people's kids on my board. Like, like if it was just his kid, I'd be like, fuck you. Well, yeah, I mean, don't I get not just like don't sp like spray people. That's what you were trying to do. He was doing it on purpose. He just kept trying to spray people. Like we're at the fucking Evil Dead musical and we're in the splash zone. Like fuck off, man. Yeah, that guy was a knob. Tell us how you really. He was a fucking knob, just like Knob City. I was like, where are you from, Knob City? And he was like, Whoa. I was like, fuck you. Okay, lady. Yeah. <laughs> Every she fucking... just like cross checked you on a cliff. No goal. This was in the case. She does that to me every time too. Well, don't let okay, it anymore. Fuck it. Who did it? Cheese it. Regrets. I've had a few. I've had a few. Find another lantern. Ah! <laughs> Dogs can't do ladders. Cause you don't have thumbs. Or am I? These are takes. Go get the item. I hate when you do that, man. You can't fucking see an item and this, then not go get it. There's fucking stairs. Go get the goddamn item before I lose my shit. Thank you. See, you got a bloodshot eyeball. We wouldn't have had that otherwise. We would be one eyeball short. Exactly. It's bloodshot. It's been smoking reefers, man. It's a high Oh, I love the little landscape there. Oh, this is actually... Yeah, it's one of the castle from Castlevania. <laughs> yeah, what's that building? The Final bridge boss. is destroyed. Final boss. That, see, that's my Bloodborne. That's my soul's born, is Castlevania games. Specifically Castlevania 1. I watched the... Oh, I hello. can reliably get to the final boss in that game now, and... Fuck, it's so goddamn hard. You mean Dracula? Yes. But I mean his second form. What? Yeah. You said you watched something. Uh, the, I watched Castlevania. The show? Yeah. It's a good show, eh? Yeah, I really want there to be another season now. Well, they're making season three right I now? I know. I want it now, though. <laughs> uh, it is written entirely by my favorite writer. Uh, and Edgar. Yeah, Edgar. No, and uh, the name... My, my son Do you want Sawyer, me to go get that item? Yes. And my oh. son Slayer's middle name is Ellis, and he is named after Warren Ellis. Aww. Delightful. Hey, you know what? Here's the thing that may also interest you then. Warren Ellis. I bought a DC comic this week for the first time in years because Warren Ellis is playing a Batman in the series. Let's try it here. It's called Batman's Grave. It's really good. 
Mm -hmm. I bought a Batman comic for the first time in a long time. First time in a long time. My number one hundred to Dr. Laura. One is hundred Dr. Laura. Dr. Laura. Walk me out Fuck. in the cold blood. Do to D. I make that joke every time too. Ah, I just you didn't even shoot. I don't have bullets. Oh, yeah, that'll that's just don't fall off a cliff. <laughs> I thought that was the clip. <laughs> I thought that was the clip too. Joke's on you, I'm out! Why don't you use the longer range version of that weapon? Hoon in it! So close to him. Ah. Hoon in it! Could you theoretically hoon it straight to the final boss of this game? No, you have to defeat it. Let's see. I don't like this phrase hoon it, but I'm using it because I want to speak your language. I want you to understand. Find another fucking. Whoa! <laughs> Good job, man. I thought for sure you were ah. stepping out into the goddamn. Ah. <laughs> See how many of these the downside to the hoon! That was a lantern, wasn't it? No! Okay. <laughs> what about that? What about that? Those are technically lanterns. <laughs> hey, Fizellas. Yeah. Ah, 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 ah. Hey, lady! Lady! EpiPen. EpiPen. Okay. EpiPen. Oh, <laughs> I don't know why you stopped and swung the camera around. Just keep fucking running. Oh, I'm getting what I can only assume is a very important text message. Nope, it's my mom. <laughs> Asking me if my laundry machine's working. Oh, wasn't. this room doesn't bode well. Oh, they're coming for you, bud. Watch them all get stuck in the door and they can't get out. Whoa! It's like all the germs in Mr. Burns' body. Oh, uh, I know this place. Seems like a really easy boss so far. Oh, never mind. The bottom bar is that the Oh. Where are you? Don't so you have to run through the spider web thing? No. To the boss chamber? Or is this it? Here you are. So, what did you kill? I killed Oh, that's the real one. You're doing hella damage! Sweet! Yeah. There she is. How do you know if there's a real one? Yeah. Watch out for the Uh, so those are things that they summon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But there's... Does this boss ever like attack you or? Yep. This there we go. Multi phase boss. Uh, it's it's like a it's a trick boss. Like it's a. Uh, so this seems really easy, dude. It is. If if you didn't know how it worked, because look, no health. Yeah. Right. Why? You'll see. You'll see. Oh, shit. Is it like every second time it spawns? Sorry. I'm focused. That's fine. Keep, keep going, I'm, I'm enjoying you, like, figuring it out. trying to see what you're doing. There you go, yeah, there's two of them. 
Oh, so one of them is real, one of them is it? So uh, you have to kill both of them. Okay. But when you kill the one, the initial one, where like the health is coming down, yeah. the other one revives her. Oh, okay. That's, so there is. So two. you kind of want to like go for luck and try to kill. Find the the one that won't revive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How do you tell them apart? You don't. They look the exact same. Well, what's going on with you, Mr. Popular? Wait, where is she? Where are you? Richie Rich. <laughs> like Richie Rich. More like witches of him. We exactly right. Oh, the witches of Eastwick share in the house. This is stuff a different game now because that seems like the easiest fucking boss. But that was easier than most of the fucking like regular mobs you. So this was the game. boss I was hoping to do. Because <laughs> it was easy. Yeah. Well, congratulations, you slaughtered your prey. Prey oh, slaughtered. Thank you all so much for watching. To join my guests and I live, check out our Twitch channel, Nearly Competent. You can reach us at the social media links in these credits. And if you want to support us even more, check out our Patreon. Thank you to the fiends currently supporting us. We will see you all next time. Have a good evening.